It is a Feedback Friday. We read and answer your comments and questions about Phoenix Copley and the future of the Kings goaltending position. And there are plenty of trade deadline questions and comments, all that and more on this edition of Locked On LA Kings. You are Locked On Kings, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Kings. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, Kings fans, welcome to Locked On LA Kings, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On LA Kings your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. Please like and subscribe if you are enjoying this content. I am Eddie Garcia, your host of Locked On LA Kings. I've worked in sports media for almost 30 years, the past 20 plus years at the Fox Sports Radio Network. I'm also co-host of the Puck Podcast. It's a weekly NHL review show. That's been putting out content for the past 16 years and a passionate L.A. Kings fan for the past 30 years. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. It is a Feedback Friday where each week we read your questions and comments. Let's get right into it, and we'll start with the emails that were sent to LockedOnEddie at gmail.com. And our first email comes from Chris He says he's in northern Nevada, Carson City, to be exact. And he says, thought that roundtable show on Wednesday was fantastic. He did a great job hosting as well. It was nice to get the other hosts at the same time and get everyone's perspective on the division. Pretty interesting that all four teams have a question at goaltender, too. Everyone seemed to have good knowledge about not only their team, but all the other teams. Like I said before, I love the crossover episodes. The Locked On NFL teams do one every week during the season, and those are usually my favorite ones for the week. Getting to the Kings, uh, they really came out hot after the long break. Was worried that they would come out flat, but they were far from it. 11 goals in two games proved that they were uh, ready to go. He says two goals allowed in garbage time. Uh, Seems like the team is peaking at the right time. This is the team I was looking for uh, in the fall. Going to be at the game Saturday night against Arizona. Excited to see the team clicking on all cylinders. Hopefully the momentum will keep going. Also want to take a picture in front of the new Dustin Brown statue. Love the show, Eddie. Keep up the great work. And again, that was from Chris in Carson City, Nevada, who's making the long trek to L.A. Uh, to go check out the game against Coy- the Coyotes uh, this weekend. And you might be seeing Jonathan Quick in net uh, for who knows, maybe one of the few times as an L.A. King. That's always something to think about. But um, yeah, we had a show on Wednesday. Hopefully you guys all checked it out. It was it was actually my idea. Um it was a Pacific Division roundtable. We have the the hosts of Locked On Golden Knights, Locked On Kraken, and Locked On Oilers join me for a roundtable of the two, oh, excuse me, the four teams that are currently in playoff spots in the Pacific Division. And we kind of just uh, shot some topics around the room a little bit there. And it was funny because um, I, I did, you know, I the idea just popped in my head to, to try it. And I really thought it was going to take at least a week for everybody to figure out you know, what, what time they're available, what day they're available and, you know, that everybody's schedule could work out. And literally it fell together in like an hour and a half. Somebody suggested 7 a.m. in the morning and that just happened to work for everyone. And I said, how about Wednesday, which was two days from when I sent out the message to everybody. And they all said, sure. So I, I was stunned that it came together so quickly. And uh, we did have one minor technical glitch, but thankfully Chris, uh, the host of the one of the co-hosts of Locked On Golden Knights uh, just uh, switched over to his iPhone instead of his desktop, and you would never know that uh, there was any kind of an issue. So that was really awesome, and I thank all those guys for joining us. And and we mentioned it um, during the show, but uh, we're going to try and do something like that again right before the playoffs start to talk about the playoffs for all of our teams. If in fact we are all in a playoff position, and and everybody agreed that they thought. The four teams that were involved in that little round table, we all thought they're going to make the playoffs. So hopefully that's the case for uh, for the LA Kings and everyone else involved. Um, our next email comes from uh, Vincent in New Jersey. And he says, Eddie recently started listening to Locked on Kings and the Puck Podcast. So thank you very much. Uh, you are a fantastic host. I really enjoy the mix of substance and style. I live in New Jersey and I'm a longtime Rangers fan, but Dustin Brown is from my area in upstate New York and I became a Kings fan when he joined LA. His ceremony was first class. I love the recent podcast on Locked On where you had the other three teams 
locked on hosts from the West discuss their teams. That was great. Would you ever consider doing something similar with East Coast locked on teams, comparing and contrasting the Kings and the Western Coverts to the Eastern Coverts of your choosing? Uh, I listened to Locked On Penguins, where he and the Locked On Sharks host did something similar to what you did, comparing the two teams and discussing trade opportunities between them. Uh, best of luck and keep up the great work. So, you know, great to, to see that the feedback for that uh, Pacific Division Roundtable show was so good. I know Chris in Carson City had mentioned something about the uh, the NFL show that he watches, does one of those every week. And that makes a lot of sense because you're playing a you know one team a week. So it, it, obviously to get the other host of, on from your opponent for that week, I mean, that just makes too much sense. It's a little bit different in hockey, obviously, because you're playing three games a week typically. Um, but yeah, for sure. I know at the end of the year, uh, I think it's uh, the last week of March and the first week of April, the last two weeks of the regular season, the Kings are playing 13 games and 11 of them are against Pacific Division opponents. So I think uh, if things are all kind of the way things are trending at the moment, where it's going to be nip and tuck very close to the rest of the way, definitely be looking to get some of those uh, hosts from the Pacific Division on again. Uh, and yeah, certainly if, if things make sense, um, going forward, certainly would look to have, you know, if, if we have a, a, a trade at the deadline and we end up getting a player from an Eastern conference team or any other team, to be honest, certainly would look to have that, uh, that team's host on to talk about that specific player that the Kings will be getting. Uh, our next, uh, email comes from Mike. He is in Camarillo, but temporarily in Reno, Nevada. I don't know on the run from the law, apparently. Uh, but Mike says, what does Phoenix Copley need to do to get the trust of fans? A 17-3 record apparently isn't good enough. Personally, I think the Copley doesn't have playoff experience concern is stupid. Do people really feel that this 31-year-old man is suddenly going to lose his game in a panic because playoff hockey has too much pressure? I think it's ridiculous that we should go trade for a retread has been goalie that is currently playing terrible as a security measure simply because Copley has no playoff experience. Why don't people just look at our current Kings number one goalie that we already have. And if you haven't been watching, he's been the one that keeps proving himself game after game over and over, collecting more and more wins for this Kings team. And let's remember, Copley is not a 20 or 22-year-old kid that just got on a run and is likely to be too immature to handle the pressure of the playoffs. I mean, why do we like Copley? And why do, and why do the players in front of him like Copley? Because he plays with a calm demeanor. I'm quite certain he'll be mentally calm as well for the playoffs. I think Copley's new contract means Blake intends to stick with Copley and Quick as the backup. Copley is the MVP of the season thus far, regardless of his goals against. All that matters is the number of wins. I'm so sick of hearing King. That I'm so sick of hearing that the Kings' goaltending is a concern. The only thing concerning is how Quick and Peterson are playing. I'd really like to hear more Kings fans offer their confidence and support for Copley. And if he loses a game or two, stop hitting the panic button. 17 and three, people. 17 and three. I wish the fans would start talking more about how wonderful the story is, too. Number three goalie rises to the number one spot and turns the King season around. It's an amazing story, and let's enjoy the ride. And that, again, is from Mike in Camarillo, but on the run from the law in Reno, Nevada, or maybe on vacation. Who knows? Um, yeah, I, I, I hear what you're saying, Mike. Um, you know, fans are fans. They're always going to be concerned about something. Uh, and it's not unreasonable. Phoenix Copley's never played in an NHL playoff game. Doesn't mean he can't have success. Doesn't mean he can't do what he's been doing in the regular season. Um, and I, I have confidence in him that the Kings can go as far as they're going to go, you know, where they would with Jonathan Quick if he was playing the way he was playing a year ago. I think Phoenix Copley's at least that level of a goaltender. And I do agree with your point that he is 31 years old and he's played in a lot of games. Uh, I'm sure big games at the AHL level, but it is the NHL and the NHL playoffs are the highest level of competition in hockey in the world. And a lot of things do get magnified. Um, for example, in the playoffs last year against the Oilers, our, we knew our power play wasn't good, but when it got in the playoffs, it was really magnified how big of a disadvantage that was for the Kings. So, We'll see if, you know, if I think Phoenix Copley's done a wonderful job and I, I, I agree with your point on the whole, but as you even admitted, the issue is the backup behind him. And if the Kings want to get somebody, even if it is a retread, even if it is a veteran goalie who hasn't been doing that well on another team, just as some kind of an insurance policy, I can understand it. I'm certainly not paying a lot for it, but um, we shall see. I, I again, um, Phoenix Copley is a great story and the record speaks for itself. 
Uh, and as I've said many, many times, uh, I do think that what he has done in the regular season, I think it's sustainable. I think he can do that in the playoffs. They're not going to win a playoff series, I don't think, because of Phoenix Copley, but I think they can win a playoff series with Phoenix Copley. So thank you for the email. Our next one comes from Jeff. He's in Eastvale, and I had to look that up because I wasn't sure where that was, but apparently it's in the IE near Riverside. Uh, you know, there's... LA and the surrounding area is a big place. You don't know all the all of the, the the names of the cities. There have been some places like I've heard of it, but I don't even really know where it is. But anyway, uh, Jeff is in Eastvale. Uh, he says, uh, hey, Eddie, longtime listener, and I'm a big fan of the show. Keep up the great work. Thank you. I uh, wanted to get your thoughts and opinions with regards to the Kings Gold League plans for next season and possibly beyond, assuming that John and the Quick is not re-signed after this year. Do you still see Cal Peterson as a viable option in goal next year? If the Kings are unable to move Cal's contract, or maybe they aren't even trying to, it looks as though it'll be Copley and Peterson tandem for next season, barring no trades, free agent signings, of course. My feeling is that the Kings are still hopeful that Cal can figure things out and play at the NHL level, but if he, provide, but if he proves unable to do so, do you think the Kings take a flyer on a goalie via free agency or go the trade route? And who would you personally be interested in as a potential option in net along with Copley. Thanks for taking the time to field many questions. And as always, go Kings go. And that was Jeff in Eastvale. It's a, it's a great question. And even coming into the season, Jeff, it was, you, you heard people. I know Mark Unetti, the Kings director of amateur scouting, even admitted as much on a podcast that the, they, they believe, and it's not, you know, certain, but kind of the feeling in the organization was that the future in net the LA Kings wasn't currently in the organization. So they didn't have a ton of confidence that all the guys they have in the system, um, that none of those guys were probably going to be the next Jonathan Quick per se. Not that, not a Hall of Famer. I'm just saying the next number one goalie for the Kings for now and for the near future. So it makes sense that they would go out and look for another goaltender. Of course, you know, Phoenix Copley being signed, it just means they've got a veteran guy that they like and believe in uh, to, you know, I don't think anything's guaranteed for next season for anybody. Would they like Cal Peterson to step in and prove that uh, that signing that they gave him, the contract that they gave him, you know, that he could legitimize that and be a number one goalie? Yeah, that ultimately they would like for that to happen. Is that going to happen? I would say right now it doesn't look promising that that's going to be the case. Um, you no, know, but if you're looking for, you know, a free agent goalie out there, and some of these guys have been talked about as, as being traded um, this offseason because they're unrestricted free agents. Guys like Simeon Varlamov, who's the number two goalie right now with the New York Islanders. He's a he's a UFA after this season. He's a guy that could be moved and certainly could be available in the offseason. Um, he's a veteran guy. Um, trying to see how old he is. Looking for the ages right here. Um, he's, he's 20, he's 37 years old. So he's a little older. Or, no, I'm sorry. That was, I'm looking at the wrong one here. Uh, Barlamov is 34 years old. Uh, then you got a guy like Frederick Anderson, um, who is currently in Carolina. They've got a couple of goalies in Carolina. They're going to be unrestricted free agents at the end of the year. Uh, Auntie Ranta as well. So there's a couple of veteran guys that maybe somebody might be interested in. Uh, Cam Talbot in Ottawa has not had a good year, um, but he was pretty good in Minnesota the year before. Uh, things haven't worked out with the Senators, and he's an unrestricted free agent at the end of the year. I think they're looking to trade him at the deadline as well. Um, there was one other name I wanted to mention. Uh, Jonas Corposalo from Columbus is another guy. Um, he's in his mid-20s. Um, he's going to be a UFA, and and he's one of those guys who I think is you know could be a, a goaltender getting on a better team, um, You know, could be somebody of interest. Um, so those are some of the names as far as unrestricted free agents that could be available in the off season, but do the Kings hope that Cal Peterson can come in maybe into training camp and, you know, grab the bull by the horns. Sure. But they've been, they've been wanting to see that the last two seasons and it hasn't happened. So, uh, I think Kings fans are justified in, in having the attitude. I don't believe it when I see it, uh, when it comes to Cal Peterson. Uh, we have this from Dave in Seattle, and he says, Hey, Eddie, just wanted to give my opinion on Quentin Byfield. I hear and read a lot of comments from fans about he's underperforming and not playing up to expectations. I personally believe he's right where he needs to be, and I believe he is bringing value to the team. I was skeptical when Todd McClellan put him at left wing on the top line, but I have to admit it's worked. Uh, the line is clearly producing at a high level, and even though QB's numbers aren't through the roof, I believe he is fitting in right 
with wh what the team needs from him uh, and continuing to improve throughout the season. Perhaps he can develop into a player that is an above average defensive forward who scores a clutch goal from time to time. I'm okay with that if the team is winning and he says, go Kings go again. That was Dave in Seattle. Um, I also was skeptical about putting Quentin Byfield on the wing on the top line. Uh, and although he hasn't been putting up numbers, the top line does seem to be playing better with him there. Now, is it because of Quentin Byfield? I don't know. Uh, is it, is it, would, would they be playing as well? Are they, are they just on a hot streak right now? In particular, of course, Adrian Kempe, but Andre Kobitar has been very good as well. Um, but you are correct. Uh, it is working at the moment. So there's certainly no reason to change it. Uh, and perhaps it is Quentin Byfield that's bringing an extra element to that top line. Um, but we shall see. I would say, like we've talked about it a lot on this show. Uh, I still, I, Quentin Byfield, in my, to, to me, still has a couple of years to prove what he's going to be. Um, I know Tim Stutzler is having a very, very good year in Ottawa on a team that's not very good. And of course, he was the player that was selected right after Quentin Byfield. And there was discussion for the Kings, which one would they take? Um, and certainly at the, to this point, Stutzla is, has been the better player, but I will just reiterate what I've said many times, and we'll see if it, it may not come true. But all the people who are in the know when it comes to draft and evaluating talent all said at the draft, Quentin Byfield will have the better career than Tim Stutzla, but Tim Stutzla is the more NHL-ready player now and ready to help a team now. And so that's what they say. We'll see. Time will tell. There's no question that at this point, Tim Stutzla has been a much better player than Quentin Byfield, putting up very good numbers, contributing to his team now, although be it on a bad team. Uh, and Quentin Byfield hasn't put up those numbers. But to me, in my mind, he still has a couple more years to start to show the promise and you know the commitment that the Kings made in him making him the second overall pick in the draft. Uh, after those two years, if we're if we're not seeing it, then I will have to wave the white flag and concede that uh, Quentin Byfield will not probably be the player that we all wanted him to be, or even as good as we've seen from Tim Stutzla, but they're still a couple more years away. The Tage Thompson thing, I think is a, I don't know if it's a fair comparison, but it is a, a good example of a young player with a lot of size and a lot of potential that took a couple extra years to finally get it going. And now the guy is one of the best forwards in the entire national hockey league. So that's what we're all hoping for. There's still time. We'll see if we see it or not. But I, like I said, Quentin Byfield in my book still has a couple more seasons. And for whatever reason, uh, he that the top line does seem to be playing better with him on it. Uh, thank you for that email, Dave. Uh, our next, uh, well, actually, you know what? We're going to pause for a second on the emails because I need to tell you that today's episode of Locked on LA Kings is brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel. It is the midway point of the NBA season, and it is now time, the perfect time, for you to download the FanDuel app, which is the number one sports book in America, because new customers get a no sweat first bet. It's up to $1,000 uh, bonus bet back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Uh, then all you do, you can uh, bet on everything from the money line to the number of three-pointers made in a game or anything else you want. Uh, plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a single game parlay. So don't miss your chance to get your no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets. When you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on, that is FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sportsbook betting partner of the NBA. All right, let's continue with the emails. Our next one comes from Rich. He's in San Pedro, and uh, he lives a couple blocks away from me, from what I understand. And he says, uh, hey, Eddie, all this chatter and holdup about Jacob Chikrin. Uh, at the time he put this comment, or, or uh, at the time he had this uh, email, he says, uh, or am I, am I doing the, no, I'm still doing the email, sorry. I haven't gotten to the Facebook, or Facebook, the uh, YouTube comments yet. Uh, but anyway, Rich says, um, tomorrow is the State of the Union and meet the players. How fitting would it be to introduce Jacob Chikrin at that event? Blake would be a god. An amazing PR move and ticket sales would skyrocket. Get this deal done already. Takes me back to when Elia Kovalchuk flirted with us and decided to go back to the Devils. Us Kings fans suffered through those days. Hell, Elia Kovalchuk eventually became an LA King. I didn't, didn't really work out. Uh, no, obviously that event has come and gone and uh, no, Rob Blake didn't say, look what I got behind this curtain. It's Jacob Chicker. That would have uh, 
I will say that that would have owned the NHL uh, universe for for a couple of days if he was able to pull off a stunt like that. That would have been uh, that would have been absolutely amazing. But uh, uh, no, that that didn't happen. And as a matter of fact, I, I kind of the opposite happened, where he said basically, I think I think he said, "Breathe within the Lions, King stands. We're not going to be getting Jacob Chikrin, but we shall see." Uh, this one comes from Don. He's in North Hollywood, and he says, big fan of your podcast. I never miss a show. Thank you, Don. Appreciate that. With all the recent talk about acquiring a left-handed defenseman, I noticed from a couple of places online that Columbus's Vladislav Gavrikov may be available. I know nothing about this player, so I looked up his stats and numbers. He's played three and a half NHL seasons after a long period of development in the Russian leagues. He is the He's in the last year of a contract that pays him $2.9 million. Do you recall seeing this guy play? Does he have any big weaknesses or bad tendencies that you know of? In my opinion, it looks like he might be a fit for our number four position next to Matt Roy. We could possibly give him uh, get him for our 2023 first rounder if we feel he's worth it. What do you think about Gabrikov? Yeah, we've talked about him a little bit over the last couple of shows. Uh, big, strong guy, definitely a defensive defenseman, not going to give you anything offensively, but pretty reliable defensively, good size, has a little bit of a physical edge to him, certainly isn't going to wow you. Um, you know, maybe a, a kind of a bigger, stronger Mikey Anderson, but not not as mobile and not as good of a puck mover as Mikey Anderson. Um, so yeah, um, you know, the I don't know. We've talked about this before. I don't I know the price is what the price is. And right now you look at all of these these left-handed defensemen that are available, and probably all the I've I've only paid attention to the left-handed defensemen, but I'm sure all of these right-handed defensemen as well, which are even more rare than the left-handed defensemen. Uh, they're all in demand and the asking price is a first round pick for almost all of them. So I, you look at these names and you think, really, we're going to give up a first round pick for this guy. And he's probably going to be a rental. I don't see it for the Kings. Um, maybe some other more desperate teams out there would be willing to do it. I don't think the Kings are desperate to do this. Um, but I think he's definitely going to get moved. He's going to get signed by somebody. I have no doubt about that. Um, or should say traded to somebody. Um, is he a fit for the Kings? Yeah, but. I I would not give up a first round pick for him. And I, maybe there's a slight chance Columbus could move off of that because he is going to be an unrestricted free agent at the end of the year and he is going to leave for nothing if they don't trade him. So, but I but he's in demand. So my guess is that's not going to happen, that they'll end up getting a first round pick for him. Uh, let's check out some of the comments from this past week on the YouTube episodes. Our first one comes from Frank. He is in Rancho's Palos Verdes. And he says, good to hear that Brant Clark is not going to be part of any trade package. He has shown some incredible promise and is our next Drew Doughty type talent. I'd roll the dice with any other prospect or even Byfield to be a part of a deal. Um, maybe Spence too, Jordan Spence, but I really like his game. I guess we'll see. Um, good job as usual. I, I guess he's talking to me. But yeah, he is excited to see that Brant Clark not going to be a part of any trade package. At least that's the, that's the word. And I would agree with him as well. Like I said, Brant Clark to me is pretty much untouchable it would have to be a trade that he was involved with that was completely um you know franchise altering or something like that um we had a uh, comment on the youtube uh, shows from dominic ephraim and also i hope i'm getting this right san afsahi um both reminded me that jacob chikrin has a no movement no trade clause after this season uh, and Dominic added, I think that's why there is some urgency to trade him. Now, after this season, Shaker has a, has full control over where he goes and Arizona's hands are tied. I'm sure this summer, Chicken will take what he can get and probably approve any trade partner, but Arizona is trying to get it done before this summer. Uh, Dominic and is it San or Sam? I apologize. Um, it's definitely a very good point and, and a good reminder to me. I should have brought that up. However, Chikrin will not be in full control. He has a limited no trade clause that starts next season. So he has a list of 10 teams that he can submit to the Coyotes to say, I will, I will not accept a trade to these 10 teams. So it's not, he doesn't have full control. He's got mm, partial control. He can, he can decide not to go to any bad teams. Apparently he's probably had enough of bad hockey in Arizona. So uh, yeah, he has a limited no movement clause, a list of 10 teams he will submit to the Coyotes after this season or wherever he is after this season. 
uh, and uh, they will not be uh, able to trade him to those list of 10 teams. Uh, also commenting on the YouTube channel, this from Scott Allen. He says, I haven't heard enough of what a smart play Blake Lazat made on the Adrian Kempe shorthanded goal against Buffalo. Shorthanded, he reads the play, intercepts the puck, and instead of firing it down the ice to waste time, he spots Kempe and sends him on his way to the shorty. Not to take anything away from Philip Deneau, my favorite king, but that heads up play got things rolling. So for that reason, Blake Lazat gets the crown. And he's talking about how after every King's win, I have started over the last, I don't know, month or so of giving a crown out to the player of the game. After a King's win, I had given it to Philip Deneau. Um, and he says that he would give it to Blake Lazat. And if you, if we ever do that and you want to say, no, no, this guy should get the crown. And here's the reason why. Absolutely. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on that. Uh, this comes from Scott Casey, and he also chimed in on the Pacific Division roundtable that we had. He says, it's crazy if you think about it. All these teams are very similar, talking about Edmonton, Vegas, Seattle, and L.A. You can't predict the winner of the division. I will say this, the Kings never win the division. The Knights seem a bit old, and the Kraken seem like they'll crack under the pressure. I guess I think the Oilers will finish first, the Knights second, Kings third, and Kraken fourth. I don't think Calgary has enough to get into the fight. The trade deadline will be important here. The Kings just seem uh, deadly top to bottom. Every Kings player from line one through four is a problem. The Oilers have you know who, and the Knights are just a winning franchise. Great show. Our division is much better than most thought it would be. Well, that's certainly true. Um, the Pacific Division was thought to be kind of an afterthought, and it's possible they could get five teams in, but I agree with you. I don't think Calgary's got enough got enough firepower. Um, but uh I think four is very, very realistic for the Pacific Division. Uh, and he's right. If you didn't know the history of the LA Kings, uh, a an original expansion franchise, how many division titles have the Kings won? One. It's amazing, really, when you think about it. Of course, who cares, really? Um, I'd rather have two Stanley Cups than multiple division titles. That's obvious. But it is, it is, it is crazy that the Kings have been around as long as they have, and they've got one division title. We have more comments from uh, the YouTube episodes, but first I want to invite you to check out Locked On NHL Prospects, your daily prospect, uh, your daily podcast covering the next generation of hockey superstars leading up to the NHL draft, plus NHL draft rankings and top prospects comparisons for every team. Locked On NHL Prospects available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. All right, we got a few more comments from the YouTube episodes. Uh, this one comes from General Lee Concepts. Uh, and he comments on the Pacific Division Roundtable as well. He says, wow, that was awesome, Eddie. All four players, uh, talking about the hosts, came off humble, respectful to each other, and more than enough knowledge for the questions. Personally, I've watched the Kings from the very beginning, and still with this team, I haven't a clue where they'll finish. But one time of the year where they have traditionally faded away has been late January, early March. But then again, there was one time where losing a game actually seemed to jumpstart them going into the playoffs. Does anyone remember the name Ryan Klo of the Sharks? April 7th, 2012, game 82. What a way to be remembered. I remember Ryan Klo. I think you're talking about where he reached over the boards and touched the puck uh, during a game in Los Angeles. I remember that. I, I assume that's what you're referring to. I know the Kings and Sharks were battling for playoff positions and they played like each other back to back that year. And I think the Sharks won the final game and that gave the Kings the eighth seed and the Sharks got the seventh seed. And they ended up losing to St. Louis. And of course, the Kings ended up beating Vancouver. And the rest is history. Uh, this from Holden92, his thoughts on a left-handed defenseman for the Kings at the deadline. He says, uh, Gabrikov and Edmondson's asking prices are way too high and they aren't nearly as good as they're made out to be. And Gabrikov is big, but not as physical as you might think. The only two guys that are worth trading for are Chikrin and Jake McCabe. Uh, Double O Shoe says on the trade deadline, the looming trade for Jacob Chikrin will gauge the trade market now and during the offseason. Of course, there's always one team that will overpay to acquire the supposed missing piece to bolster its lineup in order to make the playoffs or be a legitimate contender. That is true. There is always going to be one team that uh, shoots for the moon uh, and overpays for somebody uh, kind of on a pipe dream. Uh, Marco Barrios closes it out and his thoughts on the Mikey Anderson contract extension. He says it's a great deal not only uh, is Mikey a great young defenseman? It also shows the loyalty from management. that They will do the right thing. If you do them right, great way to do business all around. Thank you to everyone who took the time to email or comment. Um, 
obviously we couldn't have this show without you guys taking part. So thank you very much. Good stuff from everybody, whether you sent the emails or commented on the YouTube channel. Really appreciate it. In closing, we have the Kings against the Ducks tonight. Uh, if you're listening to this, maybe driving on your way down to Anna for the game. Uh, it is an ESPN game. If you're watching on TV, a 6 p.m. start time uh, in Anaheim. I assume that's because of television. They usually dictate that kind of thing. So that's going to be a little bit hard. Hopefully we see an LA Kings takeover and lots of go Kings, go chance down there at the pond. Of course, you can listen to it on the LA Kings iHeart audio app as well. Kings are playing the first of back-to-back games. They are hosting the Coyotes tomorrow. Phoenix Copley is going tonight. So I assume Jonathan Quick will start tomorrow. Um, and from what we hear from LA Kings insider, Zach Dooley, uh, Gabe Velarde apparently is very close to returning to the lineup. He could play tonight, could be tomorrow. He's been out since January 14th with the upper body injury. So great news there to get Gabe back, uh, heading into tonight's game. Kings have slipped to the third spot in the Pacific division. Vegas and Seattle both posted victories last night. The Kraken rolled over the Flyers 6-2 while the Golden Knights got by the Sharks 2-1. So Vegas now has a two point lead on Seattle and a three point lead on LA atop the Pacific. Kings are one point back of Seattle, so a win over the Ducks tonight, and L.A. will move back into second place. Hopefully, we see that exact thing happen. If you would like to give feedback for a feedback show on next week's show, next week, um, the email address is LockedOnEddy at gmail.com, E-D-D-I-E, LockedOnEddy at gmail.com. We are on Twitter at LockedOnLAKings, also Instagram at LockedOnLAKings. Again, thank you guys so much for all the emails and all of the comments on the YouTube channels. Really appreciate it. Good stuff. Uh, We'll do it again next week. I'm Eddie Garcia. Thank you for listening and watching Locked on LA Kings. Have yourselves a great weekend. And as always, go Kings go.